For almost 60 years, every new stallion has shattered the ceiling of heavy lift. But behind the thunderous rotors lurk battlefield rescues no camera ever caught, a White House mission that imploded in a sandstorm, billion-dollar budget knife fights, and a 2025 scheme to turn the newest king into an airborne pickup truck of doom. Buckle in. The stallion bloodline is about to prove why brute strength still matters in an age of drones. The first CH-53A dropped into Vietnam in 1967, its twin T-64 turbines clawing at suffocating heat. On day one, the Marines discovered a loophole in physics. The bird could sling more than the manuals allowed. At Camp Carroll, crew chiefs tied a 19-foot patrol boat beneath the fuselage, skimmed treetops, and set it into the Qua Viet River, rescuing sailors who'd penciled in weeks of salvage work. Word spread, and requests ballooned, from hauling five-ton guns across paddies to airlifting elephant-sized generators onto mountaintop outposts. Heroics met headaches. Gearboxes overheated, rotor blades cracked, and a tail pylon resonance nobody foresaw threatened to shake the helo apart. Sikorsky rushed engineers to Da Nang, where they slept beside grease drums and rewrote maintenance manuals by lantern light. Inside each frantic fix lay a revelation. If the frame could survive this abuse, commanders would keep demanding more muscle. The Corps soon asked for double. Enter the CH-53E Super Stallion. Three engines, seven main rotor blades, and a payload leap from 18,000 to 36,000 pounds. Enough to fly a light armored vehicle straight off an amphibious deck. During Operation Desert Storm, Super Stallion shuttled 9 million pounds of cargo in barely four days, turning the Kuwaiti desert into a conveyor belt of steel. When a Marine howitzer battery ran low on shells, a single E-model backloaded the entire ammunition pallet, landed inside shouting distance of the front line, and lifted away before Iraqi artillery knew what hit them. But horsepower came at a blood price. Between 1969 and 1990, CH-53 variants killed more than 200 service members in accidents. The Navy recorded a Class A mishap rate nearly triple its helicopter average. Mechanics called the Super A Hangar Queen, that devoured 40 hours of wrench time per flight hour by 2017. Yet every squadron commander who lost sleep over parts shortages still fought to keep their stallions. Nothing else could carry an armored Humvee onto a goat trail. Raw muscle echoed far beyond battlefields. In Okinawa, Japanese officials tallied hundreds of noise complaints after CH-53E thundered over schoolyards near Marine Corps Air Station Futuma. Then, on a gray October afternoon in 2017, an E-model crash-landed in a farmer's field, torching local headlines and forcing U.S. forces to ground the fleet in Japan until inspections cleared every gearbox. Stateside lawmakers fumed at the accident record, 